Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juliana and today we're going to be talking about a true crime case out of London, Ontario, Canada. Now this case is from 1996 and it is still unsolved. There isn't really a whole bunch of information about it out there, mainly because it was 1996 and the media didn't cover um, cases in depth as they do these days. So. I definitely think it's a case that should be talked about, so let's get into it. Samuel Lottery, better known to his friends and family as Sam, was described as a very happy-go-lucky kid. He was 17 years old at the time of his disappearance and murder. He loved playing basketball when he wasn't attending classes at HB Beale Secondary School. That's what he would be doing. He was also very tech-savvy, so he loved to tinker with, you know, old, old computers, that kind of stuff. He also loved going on vacations with his family to Jamaica. On Sundays, his family would worship at a church called Pillar of Faith Church. Correction, Pillar of Fire. That was at 27 Gun Avenue in London. On Friday, January 19th, 1996, Sam didn't return home from school. Now, his parents knew that this was something that he wasn't prone to. mother's name was... Tathlin, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, and his father's name was Errol. So they immediately reported it to the London police as a missing child. And he was 17, not yet an adult, you know, under the law. You have to be 18 to be an adult. He was still a minor. But it seems like the police didn't really take off running with this sort of things. Because, you know, teenagers, oh, they might be hanging out at a friend's house. They might just be, you know doing something and they lost track of time or whatever. So I don't know how in depth they went with the investigation, but it was two months before anything was heard. They didn't hear from Sam, he didn't show back up at home. His friends, his family, they knew nothing. So two months later in March of 1996, one of two letters would be delivered to the Pillar of Fate Church that Sam and his family attended. Now, while the contents of this letter has never been released, it's been assumed that it was probably a confession to the murder, either by the murderer or it could have been a witness or it could have been someone that was told about it. But they basically told the family what might have happened to Sam without going into much details, as far as I could tell from the research that, you know, that I did. And what made the family and police believe that this was a genuine letter? There was a picture of Sam that was in his wallet that was included with the letter. So the police knew that this was legit. The second handwritten letter arrived in November of 1996, and this time it was sent to his parents' home in White Oaks. Again, the contents of the letter has never been released. While police has never revealed the contents of the letter, they did state that Sam died on January 22nd. He went missing on January, on January 19th, which leads me to believe that he was held captive for those few days before he was murdered, and this was included in the letter. That's the only way that they would know what specific date that he died. This time, it caused police to search along the Thames River. After the completed search, the police found nothing. However, in May of 1997, a man was walking his dog south of Black Fairs Bridge when he came across a human bone. Several other human bones were discovered and a subsequent search of the area was done. Now, where the human bone was found compared to where this, the church was, was probably only like a three minute um, drive or walk. In December of 1998, the police announced that the bones belonged to Sam because DNA takes a while to come back. And that's when police decided to de declare his death as suspicious. In June of 2000, that's when the family finally buried the, the bones that they had. It wasn't a complete body, but they, they buried it. They buried them. Three years later, in November of 2003, a human jawbone was found near the same location as the first one. Finally, in April of 2008, Sam's skull was found in the Thames River near Guy Lombardo Bridge. Further testing determined all the remains belonged to Sam, and on October 26, 2009, more than 13 years after he disappeared, a homicide investigation was officially launched by police. Now, why it took this long for the police to, you know, finally say, okay, this kid was murdered, 
let's get an investigation started. I don't know. I'm assuming that maybe when they received the, the skull, that might have given them a cause of death. I'm not sure. Like I said, the police has been very tight-lipped about this case. They hasn't they haven't revealed much to you know, to the media. But they do believe that it was more than one person that committed this crime. I'm going to read to you a statement that his mother has released back in 2009 when the investigation was launched. The Lord comforted me. I know the Lord and I trust him. He keeps me going. I find it especially disheartening how little information there is out there on Sam's disappearance and murder. And I wonder if this is a case of missing white girl syndrome. If Sam had been a white, beautiful teenage girl, would his case have received more coverage? That's what Sam's mother had to say. And is she speaking the truth? But that's how she feels. That's how the family feels. And they're entitled to their opinion. But she is telling the truth. There hasn't been a lot of coverage in regards to this case, even to this day. I just happened to come across it because I was researching for another case when I came across this one. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this one, about Sam's case, because it's older than the case that I was about to cover. And like I said, I've never heard about it. And definitely multiple people out there know about it. The person that wrote the letter, they could have been the murderer, like I said, or they could have been a witness. Or it could have been someone that the murderer confessed to. But there are theories out there that this could have been done by a stranger. But I highly doubt that. A stranger is not going to be putting enough or that much energy to find out what church he attended, where his parents live, and all of that. So I definitely, in my humble opinion, I don't think this was a stranger. This was someone that he knew. I, for some reason, I have a belief that the, the parents... Of the perpetrator or perpetrators know something about this case because I find that in a lot of true crime cases that I've watched or heard about the parents are the ones that help to cover for their children or tell them no don't turn yourself in you know we don't want you going to jail but your child or your family member took the life of someone else you don't want them going away to jail where you can still go see them you know, you're just letting this family... They don't know why he died, why he had to die. They don't know who did it. It's crazy. It's just one day your child doesn't come home from school and a few months later you find out you're starting to find different parts of his body. You can't even give him a proper funeral, a proper send-off. Because like I said, in 2000, the few bones that they had found at the time was buried and then three years later, more bones was discovered. So they, they had to dig up the bones that they already buried to put these ones in like I don't know it's, it's a crazy story it's complicated and somebody knows something these perpetrators could have been kids themselves at the time you know when this occurred so your conscience come on now your conscience must be speaking to you it's time to speak up and let this family have you know some sort of justice I know they have a strong faith and that's what has comforted them over the years but still justice needs to be served so if you know something about this case come forward don't forget to like and share the video let's get this out there so more people can hear and we never know you know i'm a small youtuber but we never know who might be watching this case so let's get this out there share the video like comment like i said this will definitely help the channel out and if you've made it to the end of the video, see you in the next one. Bye.